if your friend is a member of winners chapel please tag them to this video because what i'm about to discuss is very very beneficial to you as well who is watching me as a christian and for those who are also pastors let's listen to a snippet of this video as we talk about the person of bishop david oyodepo and uh, pastor Daya Olutayo is the in-law of Bishop David Oyedepo. By reason of being the youngest brother to Faith Oyedepo, Daya was introduced to ministry work by Bishop David Oyedepo, where he served as a church assistant and actually lead with the Oyedepo's for a few years. So prayer is our access to the help of God. And therefore we must learn the principles of praying correctly. His first official posting as a resident pastor was the Maidogiri branch of Winners Chapel. He showed ministerial grace and excellence, which earned him another foreign posting to Nairobi, Kenya in 1995. Within three years, the church started from scratch. It was able to erect the 3,500-seater auditorium, built debt-free and dedicated in 1998. The grace of God upon his life earned him another posting to Abuja to supervise the transition from Area 1 of Durumi District and subsequently he was consecrated a bishop. The normal win of transfer associated with Living Faith Church came calling in 2004 and Bishop Daya Olutaya was sent to Port Harcourt. This decision to remove him from Abuja Diocese to make way for a hierarchically senior colleague Bishop David Abioye, who is still with the ministry, to replace him did not go down well with him. He introduced Bishop Abioye to his flock and in preparing to relocate finally to the new territory, he ended up relocating finally out of Winner's Chapel. So why did this happen? I'm asking the same question, why did he relocate? You have to understand that it's not easy to actually run a ministry. Just like how you would get to run a business and you have franchise here and there, if you don't have loyal people or would I say the good human capital that get to work with you with respect to your vision and mission for your establishment, it may not actually be as fruitful as you expect. Like looking at the story of Winner's Chapel, make your impact within a ministry if that is where god wants you to be impact is not limited to pioneering a ministry now back to the old testament aaron was impactful under moses study exodus very well joseph was a successful servant in the house of potiphar You can make impact. It's just that a lot of us want visible in court. We want visibility. We want to be seen as the head. But you see, being the head is not the same as being a leader. You can lead from bottom. You can lead in the middle. You can be a cleaner and a leader. Don't forget what we shared a little while ago on attitudes. These are attitudes. These are attitudes. Leadership is an attitude. It's not a position. So you must appreciate uh, that, I mean, there are people who share testimonies of my, my privileged impact on their lives. But I'm not number one or the head of this ministry, the head ministry which I am. So let each man stand in the place where God has put him and be making his impact. If you're a cell leader, you can make your impact among cell members. I was once Believers Foundation teacher's class and I know three people that I taught that became pastors. Consistently. So impact is not about position of visibility. Impact is about relevance of touching lives. Every one of us can touch lives, irrespective of the position where you are. Daya Lutai, shortly after his return to Port Harcourt, circulated a leaflet where he denounced his bishopric office and described it as a title on the Living Faith Church. He resigned from the church and started Good Tidings Bible Church. The controversy generated by his resignation almost tore the former church apart. It took the special grace upon Bishop Abuye 
for the Rumi church depleted by his exit to gather back multitudes. It is said that Pastor Olutayo had earlier informed Bishop Oyedepo that he wanted to be released to start his own gospel work, but Bishop Oyedepo had told him to hold on. This was happening at the time when Bishop Adjeman forcibly took over Ghana branch of the church following the reorganization of the headship of the branches of the churches worldwide. Bishop George Adjeman, head of Ghana branch of the church, reportedly resisted his transfer to Ibadan or your state after he had successfully planted the church in the former Gold Coast and money was rolling in. Number one thing you have to note right here is the principle of loyalty you understand which one thing i get to like about bishop oyedepo in this context of conversation is that you can confirm as a member of a church is that idea of not holding on to people and people if they wanted to leave the church or leaders that has worked with them if they want to leave they can leave and then go start up their ministry remember our video the previous one we looked at comparing the Pastor Sule curses on people who decide to leave their ministry. There was one pastor who texted me and said, uh, My father, I want to tell you that uh, God has told me to leave ECG and start my own. I said, I kiss you. And those who actually, you know, let it happen. There is no church where people don't leave. Hello? Yes. You better know that. Jesus is the greatest pastor. One day, he lost everybody. <laughs> Remaining only 12. <laughs> he said, Will you also go away because I want to start afresh? Yeah. Amen. Just love people. Yes. Just have your, their goodwill in your heart. Yes. Amen. Yes. Wish everybody well. Yes. It will remain well with you and your ministry. Yes. Wish everybody well. There's no shouting about You are not the savior and you are not the owner of the floor. He owns the floor. Amen. And many will be called into ministry from that ministry and doing great things for God. You can imagine if I kept uh, David here all his life to behead Osha. <laughs> Amen. See what God is doing through him. <laughs> Amen. If I told Paul, come after me, you will come. And then all these coats you are wearing now may not be there. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I told you what one of our elders said, what of those who cannot make to Canaan. I said, there are other churches around. Amen. I'm not saying that, not to put anybody off. But I won't let the feelings of people make me miss God. Can I hear your email? In trying to confirm this story, I got to find out that even the bishop in Ghana is still running the Venus Chapel over there. Now, but the reason why I'm bringing the discussion right now for you to have is that, you know, when we look at, as I was looking at this video that just came out recently, where Bishop Oyedepo is anointing, or would I say, pouring oil. I think it's just interesting for you to see that despite what it is that was rumored or like I've just told you right now that happened of which he had to leave the ministry and then start off his own ministry adjacent to adjacent to the last place he was in Abuja and then having that reconciliation or what I say that show of um, you know brotherhood as well I think is just quite amazing and if you're watching me as a pastor some of you I know you might you know build something already with someone and then along the line the person gets to leave you to start his own ministry we looked at a couple of examples right here you know the popular one now the apostles let me not talk now before their children start to show their spiritual mouth order in the comment so if you get to understand the dynamics of these things that happen you should know that as a pastor people are going to leave you whether you call it rebellion or you releasing them if it is really really something you are doing of God you understand I think to a great extent like Bishop Oyedepo himself was saying in the video I played for you because someone was saying in the comment last time when I played that video that um, it's not the case probably he has repented people get to grow as well because I think it was a serious issue when the, the one in Ghana who is still running the winners chapel Ghana 
with the same logo everything when you see these things happen i think it's just a more expansion take it as a more expansion of the work of god come on i beat last time he was trending for having sacked over 40 pastors for being unfruitful so if he could sack people i think to a great extent for people to work with him or work in um, winner's chapel as ministers it requires there's a lot of expectation of you yourself as a leader over there if you are working there and there's that there's that hunger and thirst for productivity and if you are not productive you might not exist anymore but i'm reporting this story right now from a point of respect for how he gets to handle this situation that despite what might be happening that some pastors may not be around some would leave and then go start up their ministry he believes that of course it's possible that some would leave you pastors as well who are maybe general overseers now in your own little corner you are growing you have people that are also working under you tomorrow if they wake up and say that god has called them to start up their own how would you treat them tell me what you think in the comments by the way there's some rumor going on about pastor Dio. i don't know how true it is but i'm just listening anyway you know rumors are everywhere but like you always know right here is facts over sentiments and of course I really don't care about your sentiments. It's all about facts. Yeah,